Huh. Huh. Hi everyone, Brethany of the Wild Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for another edition of 2021 List Week! Yes, I'm continuing to go over the most significant releases of the year, good and bad, uh, bad specifically in this video as I am listing out my top 10 worst albums of the year, you know uh, what, what the deal is, so let's just get into it. Starting with uh, number 10, I had to go with Casey Musgraves, Star Crossed. Yeah, this record for Casey I thought was a very awful and awkward transition into an even more pop-centric sound. Her and her producers don't seem to take to that style very well on this LP, but while there are some ballads and more country-flavored cuts here, the record is also plagued with some of the worst mastering I have heard heard this year. Nearly every mix on this thing is blown out, compressed to death, uh, sometimes crackling because it's just like so saturated, which makes especially little sense for the cuts that are more atmospheric and uh, at least on the surface play to be more subtle. Some of the songs and songwriting on the LP are pretty trite as well, while I do appreciate the divorce and separation theme overall on this record. Occasionally Casey does get pretty corny with it, so kind of an unfortunate album overall, one that I was actually actually hoping to enjoy, given that I wasn't really that much into Casey's last LP. All I can hope for at this point is that she somehow improves and, and gets better at pop music, or goes back to her country roots that I think uh, just complemented her songwriting style so much better. Following this at number 9, we have Justin Bieber's Justice. While this was not quite as not good as his last LP, it was still boring, soulless pop music, with some of the blandest hits of the year on it, and on top of that, uh, uh, quite possibly the worst reference or inclusion of anything having to do with Martin Luther King ever on any mainstream project, period. So yeah, not only does this LP show a general lack of interest in genuinely keeping MLK's message alive and in context, uh, it also shows a general lack of passion in uh, writing, performance, delivery, everything. At number eight, we have Coldplay's dud of a record, Music of the Spheres, one that uh, even didn't seem to go over too well with their fans, which is uh, uh, sort of surprising. I thought this record might be one where they would knock it out of the park, given uh, the intergalactic concept, given how progressive and ambitious and over-the-top Coloratura was. I mean, I thought that song was just kind of average from the start, but whatever. But yeah, this record is loaded with just overblown, bland, annoying tracks. Beautiful is easily one of the worst songs they've ever put out with those, like, chipmunked vocals. Ugh. Like on People of the Pride, one of the few tracks on the record where the band tries to work in a hard groove and riff, it just ends up sounding like Muse doing a music bed for like a Ford Truck Month commercial. Uh, this record was just unfortunate. I mean, Coldplay has been putting out some pretty mediocre stuff for a while, but even for them, this was sad. At number seven, we have Florida Georgia Line Life Rolls On. This LP is pretty much every modern country pop cliche distilled, rendered down to such an extreme potency, from the formulaic songwriting to the flavorless instrumentation uh, the accents that are played up to a satirical degree, and of course working in tons of hip-hop production aesthetics as well. The writing on this thing ranges from uh, tacky and unfunny to downright tone-deaf like the ultra-patriotic I Love My Country, and when you're not getting that on this LP, you're getting girls, trucks, beers, it's like a CIA psyop. Next we have uh, at number six, Tory Lanez, Alone at Prom. Yeah. It's odd how Tory Lanez continues to make waves. There's no reason the guy should get this much attention and this much play in the music industry, not only given like all the controversies around him recently, but like his music has never quite been up to snuff, especially now. He's always been derivative. He's always been a mediocre rapper and songwriter, but at this point, like, it's just sad. Like, the guy has never really had a sound and a style and a direction all his own, and now on Alone at Prom, he is literally just doing a song-for-song ripoff of The Weeknd's, you know, 80s-inspired style today. This is just like After Hours. Uh, I, I won't even say 2.0, because that would 
you know, imply that it's like building on the original. This is like the beta version. We're going backwards. But yeah, if you want to hear this guy rip off the weekend sound, rip off his style uh, pretty unabashedly and add nothing to it whatsoever, nothing special in any way, uh, go ahead, I guess. At number five, we have also uh, the very derivative new Greta Van Fleet record, which, yeah, again, it sounds like another bad Led Zeppelin LP, but with some more like folk and uh, more ambitious prog influence which I do appreciate. It's not quite, you know, the uh, straightforward hard rock shit that their last record was. But with that, the uh, singing on the record is so much worse than the last one as well. Like, way more grating. The... <laughs> I can't even hit those pitches and uh, give to you that, that throaty, like, animalistic, raspy... Uh, it's got to be one of the worst things I've heard this year, and it's all over this record. It makes quite a few of these songs unlistenable, frankly. That is when the oversaturated and compressed production isn't making it unlistenable. But yeah, overall, instrumentally, I think the band is sounding a, a little tighter this time around, sounding like they're uh, really kind of, you know, firing on all cylinders in terms of some of the compositions here, but uh, the singing, songwriting, and production were so awful that they uh, uh, made this record one of the worst in the year in my opinion, not to mention like all of the unoriginality issues that they uh, had on their last record still pretty much plague them to this day. At number four, we have uh, Sia's music original soundtrack. Uh, the film buffs and fans out there, I don't think I need to tell you uh, how much of a shit show Sia's uh, film release for the uh, movie music was, uh, but it just so happens that the, the music on the soundtrack is uh, just as bad as the movie. For a while, while now, Sia has indulged in and even popularized some of the most cliche elements of millennial pop music, but for the most part, like, I've always given her a pass or not really felt like, um, you know, getting down on her about that because she is such a vocal talent and has always brought a certain creative flair to these cliches, uh, even if they are still cliches at the end of the day. But that is absolutely not the case for music. It's pretty ironic that she would title the uh, movie here music and the soundtrack after the movie. It, it's all named music, uh, and it contains some of her worst music. The whole record just feels like it's doing too much. It's trying to get on your nerves, and, and it most certainly does. Yeah, I mean, if you want to hear some of the crappiest and most unlistenable pop music of the year, uh, listen to music, because it, it has that in spades. At number three, we have another awful pop release that is the new AJR record, OK Orchestra, if you wanted to hear uh, all the worst elements and aspects of AJR uh, rebirthed onto an LP where, hey, now it's like more heavily orchestrated. Here you go. More horns, more strings, uh, same trite lyrics, same commercial beats that sound like they're from a fucking Target ad, more boyish and boring vocals, and uh, more just like straight ripoffs over and over and over of 21 Pilots. I have no idea how AJR continues to like make it as big as they are when like half their ideas like come from one of their most popular contemporaries and they're not even good at it even with 21 pilots new lp being as mediocre as it was so yeah ajr continues pretty much to uh, lack artistry lack vision lack flavor lack personality with a record of songs that swears it's for adults but it sounds like it's for five-year-olds so with our number two spot i went with uh, hobo johnson the revenge of hobo johnson yeah, this record definitely hurt in a few different ways, not only because I was looking forward to it, I enjoyed Hobo Johnson's last record so much. While there are some people that, that don't like Hobo's music across the board, and that's fine, it's just such a drop in quality overall. Like, on the last LP, for sure, there were some songs that were, like, very vulnerable and uh, somewhat cringy in a self-aware way, but that is increased exponentially by a factor that just makes this record uh, difficult to listen to, difficult to stomach. On top of that, the production is shit. Like, the instrumentation this time isn't even good. The group vocals are recorded like piss, the mixes are bad, the beats and bass and keys seem to be lacking severely, and the guitars that serve as the bass for these tracks a lot of the time aren't recorded well either. Plus, for whatever reason, over the couple years it's been uh, since Hobo's last record, his voice has gotten significantly worse. I don't know what it is, but his singing is just not really up to snuff, even though it was very rough around the edge. 
edges in sort of a likable and playful way on his last record. So yes, uh, everything again about that last album here is just worse by at least a couple of times. And then another reason that I'm putting this uh, record over here is that on top of this LP, uh, sort of as a joke, I'm guessing, but uh, one that didn't go over all that well in my mind, uh, he decided to make a companion record called Hobo Johnson Alienates His Fan Base, which is a kind of referenced in a skit on the end of the record, uh, saying that he's going to come out with an LP of music that that's actually or consciously bad. And uh, yeah, yeah, the, the music on this extra album is actually very bad. It's it's actually very bad. It may be knowingly bad, but it's still so awful. It's still such trash um, that the joke doesn't even go over all that well. And it, it really kind of tr 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 drove me to make sure this record landed high on this list because Revenge was sort of like a wound and then Alienate was really like throwing salt and piss and shit and puke in the wound. Thank, Thank you. you. But yeah, these these projects are awful. Don't don't even listen to them. Yeah, I'm very much like warning you to stay away from these and also to stay away from our uh, record in the number one spot. Uh, quite possibly the most pain that I have felt listening to a record uh, not only this year but it, it, for quite a while as well. Uh, that's the new Tones and I album, Welcome to the Madhouse. Think about everything that I mentioned um, about that Sia music soundtrack. That is this times 20. As I said in my Tones and I review. Uh, she does pull quite a bit from artists like Sia and a little bit of Lady Gaga. There's a lot of influences that go into her stuff, uh, but it's mostly just like some of the worst and shittiest aspects of millennial pop music uh, done in the worst way with just annoying, childish, like theater kid beats. And uh, I cannot get past Tones and I's vocals. I just cannot. She is an awful vocalist. The singing on this thing is just shit. It sounds like a sheep. It sounds like a goat bleeding in my face over and over and over. Putting this record on just even in the background like raises, it heightens my anxiety. <laughs> And, like, the vocal manipulations across the LP only make it worse and more unlistenable. Like, I, I pray, I pray to God that this album is sort of like a sign that all of the worst ideas that pop music has kind of, like, you know, developed like a series of tumorous cancers over the past decade. Uh, this is kind of a sign that they're all, like, peaking and are going to wash out over the next 10 years, and they'll of course like be replaced by some other stuff that's not all that great either, but uh, the things that are displayed and toyed with on this record I feel like need to be done and need to be over because this is just like, you know, a masterclass in why they're awful. And generally I would call this record a masterclass in just like bad singing, mediocre production, just uh, tacky instrumentation, tacky lyrics, how to make music that's annoying, how to make music that panders. There's something strangely infantile about it as well. I could go on for hours and hours and hours about all the ways in which this record is unlikable. It's actually kind of a feat that Tones and I has, like, layered so many awful and unlikable ideas and aspects onto one LP, one series of songs, but hey, I mean, it, the, the, she did it. So yeah, that's my number one. That is my uh, number one worst album of the year. Make sure to let me know in the comments, what are yours? What are your 10, top 10, top 20, top whatever, uh, worst records of the year? Uh, you're the best. Thank you for watching. Tran. Zition, have you given any of these albums a listen? Did you love them? Did you hate them? What would you rate them? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, uh, forever.